My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Good morning. I said that I would do a winter garden tour as soon as it was a beautiful sunny day and today is the day. So I'm going to take you in through the gate. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kitty and Holly think that we're going out for a walk now because I've opened the gate. But we're going back inside and I'm going to take you all around the garden from the gate right up to the old pig pen at the very back of the garden. And the first area we come to is this little area here with our little apple tree that doesn't produce many apples at all. And the apples that it does produce are extremely tiny. What do you need to know about the winter in this region of Campania? It is generally about 80% humidity all winter long, which makes it pretty damp. January is the coldest month and the average temperature in January will go from around four to about 12 degrees. It can get warmer and obviously it can get colder, but we very rarely have snow or frost. It's happened every now and again, but hardly ever. We get on average about 100 hours of sun uh, per month which is quite good. And you can have beautiful sunny days here in January and February, where you can go and sit on the beach and lie there in a t-shirt quite happily. Um, but then again, of course, you can have very cold days. And with the 80% humidity, that cold feels that much colder because everything is slightly damp. Generally for growing, it is pretty good. So we're very lucky that we can grow all year round. We have a big selection. Obviously we don't get so many fruits in the winter, but that makes up for it in the summer and we can preserve the fruits and make jams and dry them and all sorts of things. But in the winter, we're pretty well set with all the greens we can imagine. Earlier on the summer, you might've seen that Carlo planted a little succulent garden here and it has grown incredibly well. It's all overgrown now. And there's lots of different flowers keep springing up from it, including these beauties. This is what is left of the rhubarb plant that I planted this spring. Hopefully that's what's supposed to happen in the winter and next summer it will grow back ready to eat. Next to the succulent garden, we have a very large rosemary bush, which just grew naturally here. Very handy. I just pop down here in the evenings and grab some rosemary if I needed to cook with. And here we have Luca's first winter vegetable garden. But before I talk you through that, I'm going to let the chickens out because they will squawk and squawk if I don't. Right to the side of the chicken coop, we have this huge sage bush here, which is absolutely fabulous. And I use that all the time in cooking as well. Good morning. You want to come out and play? You want to come out? You match my jumper. You do. How are you? Alright, good play. So back into Luca's vegetable garden and let's start with what he planted first. These are the fennel bulbs, and this is one of the first things that he planted at the end of the summer. They are getting pretty big, and I'd say that they're almost ready to start picking. Underneath these, oh, it's so wet, <laughs> getting soaked. Underneath these, we've got some beautiful lettuces here that are ready to eat. Here we have some cabbages, but I think Luca has said that some of these are now ready to pick and be cooked. They'd be good in a minestrone or just cooked in a pan with lots of garlic and salt and pepper. And then along here we have various other things. We've got other cabbages and I don't know the names of all of these but these look fairly similar but rounder and then we've got slightly crinklier ones. Good at this aren't I? And here we've got some broccoli. The third and fourth row are all broccolis. And they're just starting to grow now. There's going to be another week or so before they're ready. I can't wait for them. I've missed my broccoli. No, you're not supposed to be there, chicken. Oh, they're good about how to escape. Come here. Come <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
these chickens have all figured out how to climb over their little fence. Come on, back in here. Stay there. Anyway, where were we? So we have some Tuscan kale here, which we had to order because it's not that popular here, but I wanted some kale. I actually wanted a curly kale and we've got that somewhere else in the garden. And next to the kale, we have lots and lots of lettuces. There's about three different types. Um, there's some romaine lettuce here. And again, I don't know the names. So there's this one here, which sort of needs to be picked because once they start growing up high like that, they definitely need to be eaten. The last two rows are still left over from summer. There's some little sweet peppers here, which are still okay. I've been picking them and using them every now and again. And then there's a last row of tomatoes, which really are no good anymore and should be taken down soon, as you can see. And at the very end is our giant lemon tree, which we netted in the second last video. And I'll just show you some of the lemons that are growing because last year we didn't get many but they're growing in quite well. They'll get much bigger than that. Here's one that's already going yellow. Ah, I think this is the biggest one so far. This is huge. That will get bigger than that if it stays on the tree. The apricots have lost all of their leaves. They will grow again next year. One of the most asked questions I get is what is the name of the stuff that we have growing in between the paving stones in the garden? This is Dicondra Nano. We planted it in the first lockdown when we laid this paving here and it has grown amazingly. We're really, really pleased with it. In the summer, this was all of our wildflowers, which I brought in a packet from England. Now we've been left with the hollyhocks that I planted from seed that hopefully next year will flower. There's quite a lot of them here. This is our vintage hydrangea bush, which was beautiful last year. More hollyhocks. Our double delight rose, which is one of the most beautiful scented roses ever. Now this was absolutely tiny when we bought it and it has grown and grown and grown and it's it's going to get too big at some point so I'm not sure how to tame that. This is a beautiful jasmine plant here in the summer it smells absolutely amazing and then over by the shower we've still got quite a lot of basil and this fantastic purple basil plant which is very licorice-y which we use all the time and our kumquat tree over the bed is starting to produce fruit, which will soon all go orange like that one there. Our Bougain Villa was very, very pathetic this year. We didn't get many flowers off that at all. I'm not impressed with that. I don't know if you remember when we planted all of this, it was all so tiny and it's grown so much. I mean, this tree over here, it's incredible. I love it but who would have thought it would get that big? We have a great crop of oranges and mandarins this year. It's gonna keep us going all winter long. Luca has decided to leave these tomatoes like this for now. The chickens are having an absolute field day in here. They love it. So we sort of left it for them to play around in, but I reckon round about January, he will be clearing all of this out and planting another crop of winter vegetables. I think that is it for the lower garden. I am now gonna take you upstairs to Luca's garden. Luca, by the way, in case you're not sure, is one of Carlo's brothers. He's got four brothers and Luca is the second eldest and he owns the upstairs part of the garden. So we stagger the winter vegetables and these ones have been planted later than the ones in the garden below, obviously. We also have a few different things here. This is um, another type of broccoli. This is a leafy broccoli that once it starts sprouting, you can eat, and it's very traditional here to eat it with the local sausage, and can't wait for that to be ready. So here we have red onions, which obviously are gonna take quite a while to grow, and a bit further along, there's some bigger white onions growing, some romaine lettuce, some scarola, I'm not sure if that's the right word in English, some more lettuce 
Here is a row of my curly kale that we had to order in. This is not popular at all here. Nobody really eats it, but we ordered it in and I'll be using it. I like making kale, kale chips. Now, I know I'm answering a lot of questions that have been asked before, but I do get asked them quite a lot. So I'm going to answer them again. One of the other questions we get asked a lot is who eats all of this food that we grow? I mean, 50 broccolis, who's going to eat them all? Carla has got a very big family. He's one of five boys. They've all got families. There's his parents, his aunts, his uncles, and we bring food to everybody. I mean, people don't all rely on it, but um, I quite often will take eggs down to Carla's parents, up to his aunt. I drop them off at other people's houses. Uh, we'll bring boxes of vegetables down to Carla's parents and his brothers, and it pretty much gets divided between the family. None of it goes to waste. This orange tree here is different from the ones down below. This is a vanilla orange tree, so they're a bit sweeter. The ones we've got down below are actually quite bitter. They're pretty much only good for making marmalade with. Onions. And here we have some more, quite a lot of basil still, and some flat leaf parsley, which is handy to have. All of the tomatoes that we canned this summer are now in this little storeroom here. Now, this part of the garden is fairly empty still. There is no point growing everything all at the same time because everything will ripen at the same time. And what on earth are you going to do with 60 broccoli plants? You can't really can broccoli. So basically, he will he's planted some in October, some it will get planted in December and probably some in February and then we will have a steady supply of winter vegetables all through the winter. Not sure if anything is in here or not. Not really at the moment. So we will definitely be planting some spinach in here at some point. There's a few strawberry plants left over. Very back of the garden. We've still got a lot of mandarin trees here. What a shame they're not satsuma trees. And this at the end here is very old pig pen. We do not have a pig anymore. We are not planning on getting a pig. And this is possibly where the potatoes have gone, which I need. No, just more tomatoes. Where are the potatoes? Coming out back round the side of the pig pen. Let's just go here first. These are our lemon trees, which are all covered, of course. Luca must have covered these in the last few days. And the lemons are normally ready by about late December, January, and then they'll keep us going for a good few months. And here we have more staggered greens. So pretty much the same as what we've got down in the other garden, but just planted a month or two later. One, two, three, four rows of fava beans. And then where the netting is, there's peas growing there. And then this little green long strip here is Cima del Rape, which is the, um, oh, what do you call it in English? It is a total mystery to me what Luca has done with the potatoes. They have vanished. There should be about four crates of them. I'm going to have to send him a message and ask. <laughs> Luca messaged me back and told me that the potatoes are next to the tomatoes. So this is where they get stored for the winter. He has sprinkled them with a powder which will stop them sprouting. So they need to be washed thoroughly before they are used. And they will probably last us through way until next summer if I don't eat them all by then. Some of them will be left to sprout so that we can replant them and have more potatoes next year. And they generally get planted in the springtime. And that is what we grow in our garden in the winter. And now I have to get ready to go down and have lunch with Carlo just to keep him company because it's lonely down there and I need to get out of the house for a bit. Um, excuse me, how many times have I told you you are not my cat and you are definitely not supposed to be sitting up there. It is very naughty, it is not allowed. Shendi, Shendi, come on, down. get down. Lily, look. 
Shandy. Out. Footy. It's a lovely day, so I've decided to get out. I'm gonna go and have lunch with Carlo again in the cemetery like I did last week. Hopefully he's down there. I'm really hoping that they're going to finish this lockdown soon because I really want to go out. I want to go and see the Christmas lights because um, I've got to put up Christmas lights everywhere, but I can't go out and see them. It's really frustrating. And although it is warm and sunny and doesn't feel at all Christmassy, um, it'd be nice to start getting into the spirit and going to Sorrento, having a wander around the shops, eating roast chestnuts, stopping for hot chocolate, that sort of thing. But at the moment, we can't do any of that. And he's not here. <laughs> His little office is all closed up. I know that he had to go to the town hall and do some stuff there. So I'm sure he'll be back in a minute. He's probably getting lunch as well. Okay, here he is. What have you bought for lunch today? Crespelle al formaggio. Mm. Oppure puoi scegliere di mangiare. Questo dovrebbe essere la lasagna. Mm. Oppure wow. lots of things. Sì, va bene, non è che le dobbiamo mangiare tutto adesso. Questo <laughs> posso mangiare per tre giorni. Mm. Le metto in frigo e poi li riscaldo. Oppure sartù di riso. Oh. Sarebbe riso al forno. Oppure, <ride> hai la scelta di un secondo, pollo con patate. Wow! Cosa vuoi scegliere, amore? Forse vorrei provare un po' di riso. Possiamo anche fare un altro. Eh, ok. The funny thing is, he's only got one real plate, because <laughs> he normally eats it by himself. No. We might have to bring a plate from Abbiamo home. Abbiamo un piatto così, non è affatto We've got plastic video. plates. Come si chiama il pastore che ha preso questo? Ah. Si chiamava Adi, adesso si chiama Danna. Danna? Da Anna. Ah, da Anna. Sì. Capite che sono? Quelli che c'erano nel supermercato sotto la chiesa nuova. Sì. 